Welcome to the fifth Manhattan tutorial on conditions and loops. This tutorial explores repeated musical sections as code loops and introduces the if then else or conditional statement. It is useful for code to behave differently given different scenarios. In programming, the conditional statement or if then else statement evaluates an expression known as the condition, performing one action if true or an alternative action if false, known as the else clause. In Manhattan, such functionality is expressed in a single line. This starts with the condition followed by a question mark, then the consequence if true, possibly followed by an alternative clause after a colon, if false. An example is given in the tutorial text, whereby volume takes the number 48 or 64, depending on what the pitch is. If it's higher than C5, it's a slightly lower volume, 48, else it's the default maximum volume, 64. This expression uses the greater than operator, one of several conditional operators available, as listed in the tutorial text. The first example, equals equals, compares two values and returns true if they are equal. Notice the use of two equal signs here to specify that you're doing a comparison rather than the single equals, which assigns or copies a value to a destination or variable. Other comparison operators include greater than, less than, greater than or equal, less than or equal, not equal, specified as exclamation mark equals, and operators to combine multiple comparisons, such as and, which is true if both conditions are met, or or, which is true if either condition is met. You can also use the exclamation mark to flip the polarity of a result, turning true to false or false to true. In this tutorial, we will use conditional statements with musical repeats to recreate New Order's Blue Monday. Both the drum and bass parts are provided in channels 2 to 5, coloured in silver, over three sections. To extend playback, the pattern repeats several sections of rows using the SBX repeat effect. Within each channel, repeats work by setting the start of the repeat section with SB0 and inserting a second SBX effect in the last row to be repeated, where X is the number of repeats. The intro section features a repeating bass drum. In the first four rows of the pattern, the bass drum is played 16 times, one repeat of eight iterations, seven repeats, SB7 in channel 1, is itself repeated SB1 in channel 3. This is what it currently sounds like. A distinctive feature of Blue Monday is the mechanical bass drum roll that ends each two bar phrase. This can be seen at the end of the chorus section, channel 2, rows 28 to 35, but is currently missing from the intro. To add it, we will use a conditional statement that detects which repeat we are on and re-trigger the first bass drum accordingly. I first move to the cell below the first bass drum and press the equals key to enter a formula for the whole cell, which is the first formula in this screen. We will re-trigger the first row of the pattern by looking at which repeat intro is on. I reference the repeat in the first channel by referring to intro and its repeat property and I want to re-trigger the bass drum when this is greater than or equal to 6, i.e. the 7th and 8th iterations, or 6th and 7th repeats. This is my conditional statement, and I end it with a question mark. I now specify what happens when this is true, and what happens when this is false. When true, this cell is simply the same as the first cell, cell 0. When false, I will leave this cell blank entering a value of none. Now press enter to accept that formula, and then we will copy that cell to the next two cells for the full drum roll effect. Here, I have used the mix command. This only inserts data if there is nothing already in the cell, and therefore can be used to paste data around the pattern without otherwise affecting the existing data. Now audition the pattern. This completes the first step. We shall now move to the second step to complete the bass and drum parts in the other sections. First, let's listen to the rest of the pattern. The 
chorus section features a drum pattern that is then repeated using pointers, as seen in tutorial 3. It repeats three times for a total of four iterations, then it falls through to the fill section. The original piece's distinctive fill section punctuates the chorus and features a series of open hi-hats. The phrase is repeated twice, but should gain a snare on the final offbeat, row 48, on the second time repeat. We will use what we have learnt to add a suitable conditional statement for the pitch formula in cell 248 that triggers the snare, D3, on the second iteration, the first repeat. On drum voices, different pitches represent different drums. In Manhattan, we largely follow the conventions of general MIDI, where for example a C3 is a bass drum and a D3 is a snare drum. Let's move to this cell and enter the correct formula. This time, we ask fill what its repeat is, and when it is equal to 1, i.e. the second time around, we put in a D3 for pitch, otherwise we leave it blank. Now if I go to the start of the section and hit play, we'll hear a snare drum upon the repeat. Notice how playback jumps back to row 4. If we look again at the fill section, we can see a C04 command in the last row of channel 4. This is executed after the repeats are finished, and then cuts to row 4. This effect mirrors the programming concept of branching, also known as a jump or go-to statement, which can be similarly controlled with formulas using conditions, as in conditional branching. We will now return to the chorus, which represents the core of the song. If we unmute channel 5, we hear the bass part. Repetition is an important part of music. But emotion is typically triggered when an established pattern changes, when the music does something the listener is not expecting. Currently, the bass part in channel 5 progresses F, C, D. On the fourth iteration, third repeat, we want the Fs to become Gs. First, let's add a conditional statement for the first note in the bass part, row 4, that appropriately chooses between F2 and G2. To choose between the F and the G, we will look at what the chorus repeat is, and when it is the third repeat, the fourth iteration, we will use a G2, otherwise we will retain our F2. This first pitch is now controlled by a formula, but notice that the second pitch is not. We will add a simple formula to the second pitch so that it follows what the first pitch is and adds an octave. For this we use the helper last.pitch and add 12 semitones. Now let's listen to what the chorus section sounds like now. To finish, think about how you might capture other variations and pieces using what you have learnt about formulas, which now includes all the basic concepts in programming – variables, expressions, functions, arrays, loops, and conditional statements. There are many other features of Manhattan and aspects to programming, but these provide the basic building blocks required for most coding tasks. Often, more advanced applications are simply a matter of finding innovative ways to combine simple ideas, so be creative.